Hold. Todd Chrisley, the name of your show is Chrisley Knows Best. Would you say that's an accurate statement? <laughs> I don't know how much I know best about. Uh, it's certainly the name of the show, but I'd like to say that I know best about trying to know best. Mm -hmm. Well, tell us how this show got started, uh, because I assume you never thought that you would become a reality TV star uh, in your lifetime. No, I was actually working with a uh, with a young lady, uh, Annie Kate Pines, who was working with me on a uh, another project, and we worked together for about six months. And she got a job offer to go to work for OWN Network. And um, I guess about four weeks after she went to work there, she called me and she said, "I have a favor." And I said, "Okay." And she said, um, "Would you let me do a sizzle reel of you and your family?" And I said, a what? And she said, a sizzle reel. And I said, what's a sizzle reel? And she explained it to me. And I said, but why? She said, because I really think that you are meant for television. And I said, Annie, you know, we're from the South. We don't put all of our dysfunction on the front porch for everyone to see. <laughs> and, uh, so um, she said, would you please do it? It really helped me out with my new job and whatever. And I said, well, how long is this going to take? I'm, what do I have to do? So she told me, long story short, she said, uh, I agreed to it. You know, she ended up coming, you know, ended up getting Adam Greener, who was with her at the time there at OWN, to, to, you know, to decide as to whether or not he was going to, you know, wanted to do it. Mm -hmm. And um, they called and said that, yes, that they wanted to do it. They flew in for three days and said that, um, I mean, it took them three days to shoot the sizzle reel. And they said, you know, we'll be back in touch with you. And six weeks, I guess, went by and they came back and they said, um, you know, um, they said, do you, how do you say it? Adam says, we have presented this to 10 networks. Mm -hmm. And those 10 net, and out of the 10 networks, nine of them have come back with an offer. Oh. And I said, you're kidding me. And he said, no, he said, we've never, he said, I've done a ton of shows. I've never had this kind of excitement about a show. <laughs> and um, I said, and I was really shocked by that because I was like, who, why was, why would anyone really give a shit about what we're doing? <laughs> and, um, so at long story short, there became a bidding war and certain networks dropped out. And, you know, we had A&E that was bidding on it and A&E said, you know, we're going to have to back out because you know, we have the Robertson family and we believe you have a huge hit here, but with what we've put behind the Robertson family, we believe it would compete and we can't have the two competing. So um, Oprah's network own was a very strong contender order. You know, their order order was for, I think 26 episodes an hour long. And I felt like that, who the hell wants to deal with us in their home for an hour? I mean, <laughs> eight, 30 minutes was a long time. And, um, you know, a USA was always in there, Bravo, Lifetime, E. And I'd really felt like, okay, well, you know, you've got the Kardashians on E. So, I mean, look what E did with Kardashians. So, you know, I'm going to go to E. And yeah. uh, then I started researching and realized that USA was truly the mothership. It was the largest cable network out there. So I felt like that they didn't have anything like that. Um, they had not succeeded in that reality stream yet. And they were really wanting the show. So we ended up going with USA and was the greatest gift that we've ever had. I mean, it's a network that has truly embraced us. Their followers have been, their viewers have embraced us and they're like family to us now. So we've been very blessed with it. Mm -hmm. What is it about you and your family that you think made the show something that all these networks wanted to bid on? I think it's because so many people in this country are so, so much like us in so many ways. I mean, there's so many, you know, we, we have a large family and there's, there's a relatability factor there. So, you know, someone in your family can relate to what I'm dealing with or what Julie's dealing with or what the kids are dealing with. You know, if you've got a family of four and you've got two teenagers, obviously they're gravitating towards, you know, what Chase and Savannah's going through. Uh, if it's me, 
you know, if it's a father or a husband or whatever, they're looking at me. It's the weirdest thing though, you know, when it was set up that way, you would have thought, well, you know, your followers are gonna, you know, your teenage, you know, girls are gonna follow Chase and your teenage guys are gonna follow Savannah and, you know, the moms are gonna follow me and Julie. <laughs> it so did not turn out that way because I have so many teenagers that follow me and that, you know, communicate with me via Twitter and via Instagram and what have you and Facebook. And I think that after all the research that's been done, we have the most diverse demographic following of any show that the network has. Mm -hmm. So you go from just being your average everyday family to having a TV crew following your every move. How does that affect your day? Um, you know, in, in what you're doing? Um, well, you know, we're, we're filming, you know, we signed up for it. And, you know, in the first season, you know, everything was all, you know, coming up roses, everything's great, it's new, it's exciting, you know, it's your first ride at the amusement park. Um, you get a second season, you're kind of more equipped to know what you're facing. And certainly now we're in our third season. But we have been so blessed with having the same crew that we started out with. I mean, we retain 95% of our crew. And mm -hmm they're like family does now. So, you know, they have a huge respect level for us as we do them. And if it's going on in our family, you're going to see it. I mean, we don't have a whole lot that we're keeping out. I mean, I feel like that for the dedication that the fans have given us and the loyalty, we owe it to them to let them see whatever's going on. And that's what we give you. Mm -hmm. So what percentage of it would you say um, is, reality uh, versus what you might say, well, maybe if I uh, said this, it might make a good uh, quote for Twitter. Um, okay, well, I think that you're, you know, I think that when people say things like that, you're giving us more credit than what you should. <laughs> um, I think, you know, we certainly, um, if it comes up, it comes out. Mm -hmm. And they, you know, that's why it's been such a beautiful relationship with USA. They don't filter us they turn the cameras on they've told us from day one we're a fly on the wall whatever's going on we're going to get it if we can use it we use it if we don't we don't so we're not prepped we're not told go do this you know how do you feel about going and doing this because i'm not gonna i have too many kids and two grandchildren i don't need someone telling me what to do hell i'm fighting off the dysfunction now i don't need to create any more hmm. right um so let's talk about uh, the episode that was submitted for Emmy consideration, uh -huh. which is when you and your family go to LA. Uh, can you talk a bit about the production of that episode and why you think it stands out among the rest in the season as being worthy of awards consideration? You know, I think that when you start even talking to me about an Emmy nomination, um, it's so far beyond my grasp of reality to think that I'm even having this conversation with you about that. Um, I think that that's a very, it's a wonderful episode. It's a very clean, wholesome episode. Um, my mother is truly one of a kind. She loves her grandchildren more than she loves her children. Um, and, you know, she's constantly feeding them cash as I'm cutting it off at the front door, she's bringing it in the back door. Mm -hmm. So, um, she says it's not her job to tell her grandchildren, no, that's my job. Um, I think that people relate to, people relate to it. You know, we got, when that show aired, it was one of the highest rated shows of the season. And they, you know, the, the, our fan base loves to see what we're doing and, and this fish out of water mentality. Mm -hmm. And they also love to see that we're going through a lot of the things that they're going through with their teenagers. And I could sit down and cry about it or I could, you know, laugh about it or make something, get my point across while at the same token, having some humor in it. Mm -hmm. I think that when I was, when I was younger, I had a fear of saying no to someone, you know, for fear that they wouldn't like me or, um, that I would offend you or whatever. I mean, no just came across as rude to me. Um, 
So I developed a pattern of saying no to you while at the same token, letting you laugh about being told no. So I think that for the show to be nominated for an Emmy or to even be considered for that, we certainly don't expect it. Um, we're blown away from the fact that it's even being discussed. But I think that that, that particular show is a very feel good moment. Mm -hmm. So we talked earlier about uh, the name of the show being Christy Knows Best and uh, you said that you try to know best. Um, is it ever difficult to know best, especially if you have cameras on you all the time? Well, I think that anything that we're doing in our life, Zach, mm -hmm. I've pretty much thought it through before I, I kind of walk down that path. And I kind of look at, okay, what are the, you know, what are the pros and what are the cons? Um, I think it's difficult for myself as well as any other parent, uh, husband, son, to always try to know the right answer. I think if we always, if we knew the right answer, we certainly wouldn't be screwing up. But I certainly believe that I put forth a very concerted effort to research and to kind of go through things in my mind and in my heart as to whether or not I believe this is the right thing. So do I know best on everything? No. Do I believe that in my heart at the time that I give you the advice that I give you, that it's the best advice that's available to me? Yes. Mm -hmm. So the latest season premiered mm -hmm. to about 3 million viewers. Yes. Um, where do you see this show heading? with its popularity growing? <laughs> um, you know, who would have thought three million viewers? I mean, you know, coming out of the gate for season three. I mean, that's a blessing within itself. The fact that we have a season three is a blessing in this, you know, in this arena. You know, you have shows like, you know, the, the Robertson family, who I believe is the highest rated show reality television wise that's been out there. You know, then you have certainly have the machine of the Kardashian drive. Um, you know, those are certainly shows that have paved the way for us and that have made certain, you know, certain aspects of it easier. Um, where I would like to see the show go, would I love to have numbers like that? Yes. Would I love to be able to be in that many households, you know, one night a week? Absolutely. But I'm okay with 3 million viewers. I'm okay with if I'm touching the lives of three, if our family's touching the lives of 3 million viewers in a positive way, then I'm okay with that. If I can touch 6 million in a positive way, great. But I'm not, I'm not overly, I'm not interested at all in our show becoming a train wreck. I'm not interested in all in our show becoming something that is, that's, fiction. I'm not looking for it to become scripted and, you know, you telling us, you know, placing us in situations that we wouldn't as a family do. I just told you that before I do something, I try to think it through. Um, so when it gets to the point that if it comes to that point, then we have to have a bigger discussion as to whether or not we've out, you know, we've kind of overstayed our welcome. Mm -hmm. You mentioned, uh, something, you know, if you can touch 3 million people positively, mm -hmm. as opposed to just, you know, as opposed, you know, if I can have 3 million viewers, uh, you look at it as this is a positive message. Mm -hmm. uh, is that the underlying goal of the show to maybe affect people in a more positive way as opposed to maybe just portraying some, you know, alternative reality for um, fame? Um, I would certainly, we're certainly prayerful that it would be a positive experience for you. We would certainly hope that after a long day at work on Tuesday, that you come home, you, you sit down with your, your wife or your significant other or your husband or whatever, and you have a nice dinner and you bathe your children and you sit down and you watch our show and you laugh for 30 minutes. We hope that you get that we hope that's what you take from the show. We hope that you take very heartfelt moments of a real family who deal with real issues 
but we love each other through it. Now, we don't like each other, Zach, all the time, but mm -hmm. we have never had a moment where we didn't love each other. And so, yeah, I hope that you do take, I hope that when you turn your television off, I hope that you feel that you've been effective and affected in a positive manner. Well, that's certainly a great goal to have. Uh, thank you so much for taking the time to talk with me and congratulations on the success of this show.